21, I cooked a dinner party for my older boyfriend and his friends. The truth of it is, I was desperately, desperately showing off and wanted to sort of make this cordon bleu extravaganza so that they would all think I was marvellous. It went horribly wrong, all ended in tears, but the moral of the story was that when you're cooking for a lot of people, and make it as straightforward as possible, you don't need the hassle. In the spirit of that, I'm going to make a stuffed sea trout. I've got these beautiful whole sea trouts here. I've had the fishmonger fillet them, so they're ready to go. To start with my stuffing. So I've got some blanched almonds, and about three handfuls of those. Generous bunch of parsley, and then a good juicy handful of basil. So, you've got your almonds, basil, parsley, zest, two lemons. This filling that I'm making is half a pesto, really. And I'm obsessed by this Italian dip called Bagna Cauda, and that's with a very creamy base and anchovies and nuts. I thought, hmm, I wonder if that would be good in a, in a fish. Sort of thing I think about late at night. Two cloves of garlic in there. Six anchovies. I love anchovies in sauce because they just give this salty, musky depth to it. Goat's curd. Goat's curd is very soft goat's cheese. It's really creamy and great for a sauce. So immediately you've got that sort of pesto waft. It's like spring. Some salt. squeeze of lemon and a dash of olive oil. One last whiz. That's the most complicated this recipe gets. Mm. That is good on its own. It'd be great on bruschetta, it would be delicious with pasta, but even more delicious cooked and slightly crispy around the edges in the trout. Here, I haven't got a home craft experiment going on. I've cut a few bits of string, which is going to keep the filling inside. You wrap anything in a bow, it looks like a present. So, I'm going to take the filling, spread it on. The colours of this are so pretty too, that pale pink of the trout with that springy green. I think there's something really lovely and old-fashioned the day after a dinner to sort of get a phone call or used to be a letter that my granny used to call them bread and butter letters um, to say thank you for dinners but sort of somebody saying you know I loved what you cooked and I'd like to make it myself and that's the sort of the hostess's badge of honor so there it is so easy all that's left for you to do is preheat the oven about 200 they go in for 20 minutes delight of it is they can be served hot, room temperature, even cold the next day. So quite liberating for you because you're not having to desperately worry about timings. So all I'm going to do now is pop them in the fridge until this evening.